Alex and Jess and I have the honor of speaking with Dr. Faluka for our interview today. And so Dr. Faluka and Dr. Anderson have recently edited um, a book about college football titled The History of American College Football Institutional Policy, Culture and Reform. So I will um, pass it over to Jess to get us started with our first question. Thank you, Alex. So our first question for you, Dr. Faluka, is what do you think is a new insight that this book is bringing to the history of college football? Yeah, well, thank you for the question and really thank you for the opportunity to join you today. Um, I know I have a little different perspective since I, you know, was one of the co-authors for the edited book and also um, authored a chapter. And just a way to answer that question kind of goes to like the, the kind of backstory about how this book came about. Um, Dr. Anderson and, and I at the University of South Carolina, we were really interested in this, this topic. You know, I have more of an athletics background and, and Dr. Anderson is, is history. And we thought what a great collaboration to kind of delve in um, to college sport. And at that time, the call for proposals, meaning the request for chapters was really about college sport. And it was just fascinating when these chapters were coming in that they were all really resonating about football. And so I think that says something about football um, as a topic. And not that I think it's necessarily dramatically different or doesn't represent um, a lot of color sport, but maybe some of the, the pieces that, like in the title with the societal and the reform, I think maybe these come elevated in a sport like football. And I think that goes to how it's um, you know, visible on a college campus, the sheer size of the team, it's you know, very recognizable, and the, the, you know, the, the fan base and, and the alums and whatnot. So I do think there's a thread or that resonates in a way. And so um, that's just, I think that's really interesting. So what does it contribute? So the fact that it's focused on college football, I think in itself, that it's kind of targeted in that, but also because it does hit on so many, so many current societal threads. You know, I don't know how, how you both feel, but if I read a history book and then I'm like, well, this is still living history today, right? It's like these are current, almost current events framed just with a different year. And so I really enjoyed how the chapters came together and how the really diversity of thought and topic. And so, um, for example, thinking about um, advocacy um, from student athletes, as well as thinking about um, equity and uh, also, you know, masculinity that's framed in, in college football. Um, and also this idea of power and, and influence from the administrative side. I mean, I think that came through in a couple chapters. So I, I, I like that it's, you know, unique to college football, but still has a lot of current trends that we continue to learn lessons, we continue to build that insight and, and introspection that I think will kind of also help carry us forward and looking ahead into the future of college sport and particularly with college football. Thank you. So our next question is, do you feel athletic departments are responsible for teaching student athletes to be anti-racist? And if not, who is? I think this is a great question. Um, and as a former athlete and former coach, I can tell you, um, and Alex, you, you may share this. I know you, you have some similar backgrounds too. I really think of coaches as teachers. You know, people ask what reasons I like to teach. And I can harken back to some early coaching days in that time and practice <laughs> primarily where the teaching really allows you to do that. And so it, I think that that's because one, one analogy here is, you know, we're educators, we're, we're teachers, we're educators uh, from a coaching side. But from, you know, even the playing environment perspective, that is your, your learning classroom, you know, in, in a lot of ways. Um, specific to the sport and the technical skill and, you know, the endurance that you're building and all those important things. Um, but so much else happens within those environments. Um, that speak to, you know, just society um, um, influence and also thinking about kind of, you know, what skills you're learning in time management and teamwork and um, how to work with others that, you know, come from very different backgrounds and maybe not always agree all the time. And, and by the way, you spend a lot of time together. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's, it's you, you really have to work through these, uh, these components. And, you know, you're, you know, what we know about college students in that developmental stage of 18 to 22, traditionally, for college athletes. So 
all that to say, uh, yes, I, I do think there is a role there. And it really is based upon this idea of teaching and, and, and learning that happens through college sport. I think another, and that's just a, a natural crossover. I think something else that maybe is more prevalent, I would say in the last, I wouldn't even say 10 to 20 years, and maybe probably longer, but seems to really uh, have, have risen of, as of late, is this idea of the holistic experience for student athletes. And really you're trying to graduate, not only graduate student athletes, but set them up for success in life. And that's through you know, community contributions, um, to be good professionals in their chosen field. And so there is a responsibility, I think, in that to really um, think about how to, that holistic experience and how to support student athletes in a variety of topics, particularly with anti-racism, because it, one, it, it is a very important topic today. It's always been, it's again, the, the trends continue, you know, history repeats itself, but how important it is um, to really think about how, um, how topics like anti-racism racism can be addressed. But, you know, there's also this unique component of identity development with student athletes and this advocacy role. And what an awesome opportunity to, to really use that platform. And so, you know, when we saw, you know, this past summer with the racial unrest and, and you know, some really unfortunate things happening across our country, who, who really rose to the top? And we saw college football players, so many, teams really taking this as, as an opportunity to, to make a stand. And I, I hope that continues. I really do. And I will say it was really neat to see the coaches and athletic departments supporting the players in that. You know, um, I, I can tell you this probably not that long ago where that would have been frowned upon, or at least that would have been really concerning as a kind of PR um, perspective. And that has seemed to go by the wayside because the, the importance and significance of the topics, but as well as who's who's bringing it to the forefront in college football, I think is making a big difference. And, and that is exciting. So um, yeah, I, I think there, there's great opportunity to continue some of these threads, but absolutely there is a role um, within college sport and particularly with college football. Yes, awesome. And so now continuing with the, the current events theme, but switching over to COVID. Um, so during this COVID-19 pandemic, how do we justify when campuses are closed, but yet they still provide sports? Yeah, uh, I giggle at this question, not because it's funny, but it's like, yeah, this is um, this is the unanswerable question. I'm happy to respond, but it's, it's I really, I'm not sure how, I, I kind of have this thought, like in 20 years, we'll look back and go, what were kind of, what were we thinking in some, some ways? And I don't mean into a total detriment. I don't mean it to sound um, as dramatic, maybe. But I hope that there are some real lessons learned for what has developed in the last year. And let's start by hoping we never have to encounter um, a situation like this. But you know, chances are it will happen again in you know the next hundred years, or some something will. Um, and how to deal with it? So you know, I. I don't know how you just, I, I really thought about it. Um, I think it's a very difficult um, justification to make. I, I do think there have been some positives that have emerged from this that, you know, if there's a silver lining, let's, let's talk about it. Um, I think it shows what, you know, I think for a lot of student athletes that, you know, who, who are so used to this routine, right? And we all have routines, but when your sport has been, you know, your identity for, for a long time, to have that taken away with everything else, um, that could be very difficult. So the idea that this allowed um, this capacity for growth and development and commitment to sport to continue, I think was a saving grace for some student athletes from a mental health perspective, from um, yeah, that, that development perspective in sport. And so I do think it benefited um, a large number of student athletes who actually appreciate that outlet, so to speak, that wouldn't have had it otherwise. I don't think that's a global statement, um, and, and I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far, but I do think that for some students, at least this is really helpful. I also think it kind of shows, you know, almost the endurance of the human spirit and, and what you can accomplish <laughs> when, when, um, when all things seem to be kind of collapsing around you, for good or for worse, for better or for worse on that, by the way, but it is, a, you have to sit back and be kind of amazed, you know, I, I think about the college football season from the fall, I feel like several athletic directors and conferences noted this, that, wow, we really pulled it off almost, this kind of disbelief 
because going in, you kind of have, you know, like this is plan A and there is no plan B, <laughs> but, you know, they, they were able to be successful in a lot of ways. So there is just something to be said for, um, I do think that there's something to be said for the human spirit in that. Uh, but yeah, I come back to the lessons learned um, and really thinking, let, let's celebrate the, the win, so to speak, but I hope we spend some time on the loss because we did lose something. I mean, I, I have to believe as an industry, something came to bear here that we have to look in the mirror and really understand what we put into place and, and potentially put into jeopardy um, to try to make the season happen. Awesome, thank you. And then, so with the increasing sense of college sports being a business, um, do we feel college um, athletics support the mission of higher education? You know I'm laughing at that one. This is the question we talk about in class all the time, like in the back of your head, always have this. Um, yeah, uh, okay, yes and no. <laughs> and it's a great question, and I hope that we continue to ask ourselves, because there's no absolutes here, and we, and we know that, there's a lot of gray. Uh, so the, I'll start with um, the yeses. How has it? I, I think college sport and college football um, really elevate kind of this tradition and um, support within a campus. You know, if you're winning, that leads to, you know, winning attitudes. We see enrollment being impacted in positive ways. Um, I think there's just this general um, you know, feeling or effect of, 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 you know, we're a winning institution. And so I think that's great. Um, I think also what you see, particularly at the conference level, and I'm talking more about the big, the big five, the major conferences, is that you have a, um, a peer group that is a really good competitor on the field, but a really good competitor in, in a lot of different programs. You know, if we talk about benchmarking, who do I go to? I look to my, the, S the Southeastern Conference. Um, peer institution. And, you know, the, the SEC, through a lot of their um, network funding, have set aside a good chunk for the academic environment, the faculty development. And now they have, you know, this, this annual meeting of, you know, and they, they elevate, you know, faculty of the year per institution. So I, I like that synergy. It's kind of neat to see how you can look at your conference group really as, yeah, your kind of academic peer group. So that's, a, I think, a good example of, of how these things coalesce. Um, I think the negatives, um, I, you can't ignore the money conversation. And I, I do think COVID exasperated a lot of so-called ill wills that were, you know, maybe hidden or less visible. And so the idea right now that, you know, basketball teams are still playing in a bubble and haven't been able to leave <laughs> um, Indianapolis or San Antonio, that um, you, you hear from um, the coaches, the women coaches um, who have, are, they weren't allowed to bring their children into the bubble because of, you know, you have a max limit of players or, or people you can bring in and they didn't make the cut, so to speak. And just the, the sacrifices that are having to be made, I, I just, I, I'm having a hard time reconciling how we're supporting the university employees, the student athletes, and the mission of academic, you know, focus, um, even though I know there's great support in the virtual learning and they have tutoring and whatnot, great benefits, but I don't think it resembles as much what they can likely do from, especially from a mental health perspective on, on a college campus. So, um, yeah, I, I, I just, that's where I think it, it, it's, it's a little difficult. The other kind of part of that I would say is you know, it's really hard to reconcile the, the buyouts for coaches, particularly the, the larger schools. Um, we're seeing that now around us with, you know, having to make some tough decisions at the institutional level, even though technically it's a different pot of money and it is, but perception is it's you're one entity. So how are you paying for this coach, but not paying for this other really important academic focused element? And, and I feel for faculty who have to make some tough decisions, you know, trying to support student athletes and trying to do well, but um, you know they, they may be compromised. There's just a lot to unpack there. So I, I'm going to end on it depends on the day. <laughs> awesome, thank you, Jess. Do you have any more questions, or Dr. Fluka, any more comments? No, thank you so much for answering our questions and giving insight. On and we're excited about this book. Yes. That's awesome. Well, thank you for the opportunity to talk with you. It's so great at, at this project. 
seems to be working out really well. And um, I think there is something we said for the questions that you generated, what's on your mind. I think that's going to be on the mind of a lot of people. So this is serving um, many purposes and I appreciate that.